Good morning, I'm Adam Sexton. If you want to trust the polls 100%, Joe Biden is about to walk away with New Hampshire's four electoral votes by a safe margin. But many political insiders here in the Granite State believe the race for the White House could be much more competitive than it looks on paper. This morning, we're talking to surrogates from both campaigns, and we'll get into some analysis of the race as well. But let's start things with Donald Trump Jr. So what's the closing argument to give President Donald Trump four more years? Honestly, it's accomplishment. Uh, compare Joe Biden's 47 years in the Washington, D.C. swamp. Name a single accomplishment, but if you can't, it's sort of part of the problem. When you look at Donald Trump and what he's been able to do, what he's been able to do despite unprecedented incoming, you know, hatred from the left and from the media that no president has ever taken, four years of Russia nonsense that ended up being totally disproven. Now, no one wants to look at, you know, Joe Biden's actual collusion with Russia through his son when you now have eyewitness testimony from a military intelligence officer who is a Democrat donor coming out and saying, okay, enough's enough, this guy's compromised. No one wants to hear about that. So we got to live through four years of that, and Donald Trump still grew the strong Longest economy America's ever seen, created the lowest unemployment numbers for every demographic in America, for African Americans, for Hispanics, for women, created the highest number of new startup businesses. Donald Trump took on big pharma to knock down our prescription drug pricing so American companies aren't selling in Europe for 10 cents uh, on the dollar to what they're selling here and just gouging Americans. And more importantly, he took on the establishment in the military to say we're pulling out of the endless wars that our own generals can't tell us why we're in other than everyone wants a board seat at Raytheon when they retire from the Pentagon. Donald Trump was able to do that and get peace deals done in the Middle East. Four of them now. Four of them. I mean, I, I would rack that up against any president's accomplishments and certainly relative to a 47-year swamp creature whose only accomplishment was a crime bill that put people in jail for 30 years for smoking weed rather than actually tackling real crime. I'll take that any day. Paint the picture for us. What does America look like under a Biden administration? Well, I, I think you have a high tax, high regulatory environment. You know, what people have to understand in places like this where you have a strong sort of history of blue-collar Democrats, this Democrat Party doesn't represent those people anymore. You know, Joe Biden pushed for NAFTA, which sent your jobs to Mexico. Joe Biden pushed for China's permanent status and TPP uh, in the World Trade Organization, which sent our jobs and your American dream to China. Th this Democrat Party isn't your grandparents' Democrat Party. They no longer represent those people. They're worried about, you know, the 9,276 genders uh, rather than jobs for Americans. You know, Joe Biden, you know, let's just shut down the world. Well, shut down the world. You put a mask on, you stay in your house for three years. Your kids stay at home. They can learn off an iPhone for five minutes a day. It's not realistic. And when you look at America's response to COVID, since they always love to talk about that, look at Europe and look at America right now. They talk about infection rates in America are going up. Yeah, because they're testing 1,000 times more than they were a month ago. So you pick up more of it. But if you look at actual death rates, the number no one in the media wants to talk about, it's almost nothing because the therapeutics, because of the advancements and the treatment that we've been able to figure this thing out. No one talks about Joe Biden's own response to swine flu, where his own guy, his own chief of staff that was handling it, because he had a similar role to Vice President Pence, said, man, we got lucky that thing wasn't deadly because it was a disaster. We did nothing right. They didn't then replenish the PP&E. They didn't learn from anything. So, you know, I don't like it when I hear Joe Biden, oh, he would have done it so differently. What was his plan? To leave borders open from China for another 12 weeks, which would have Tens of thousands more sick people would have come here. That would have overwhelmed our system. He called Donald Trump a racist for shutting down travel from the epicenter of a viral outbreak. And then he says, we'll do that. We shut it down forever and we'll wear masks. That doesn't work. The damage, if we shut down this country, which is rebounding back, you saw 33% GDP growth, the highest ever, because Donald Trump built a fundamentally strong economy. You shut it down again. You get past a point of no return. You can't bring back those jobs. You can't bring back those businesses. We're still in the point where we can do that. But Joe Biden's never-ending shutdown, again, they don't care. Because if you lose your job or your business, guess what? The Democrats, they'll put you on a government program. You'll be a Democrat voter for life. We're about self-sufficiency. We're about independence. We want Americans to be able to make that decision for not big government. You're here. The president's been here a couple of times. The vice president's been here. Not as much attention from the Democratic uh, ticket, but uh, how crucial is New Hampshire to uh, the Trump campaign's path back to the White House? Listen, I think all the states are crucial. I mean, you know, we're here because we don't have the benefit of a mainstream media that will campaign for us. You know, Joe Biden, he called the lid with 10 days left. You know, they, then they forced him out of the basement, uh, you know, to do one or two stops a day at best. You know, we, we don't have that benefit. We don't have social media that will hide, you know, the corruption that Joe Biden's son have. You know, they'll hide that, they'll censor it. No one's actually denied it. The Biden campaign hasn't even said the emails aren't real. 
you know, but they know that their lackeys in the media will do that for them and cover it. We don't have that luxury, so we have to get on the ground. We have to speak directly to those people that my father wants to represent for another four years. When we do, that message resonates, but they don't hear about those successes. They don't hear about the economy. They don't hear about, I mean, they spend more time fact-checking my sister's RNC speech when she talked about her little son building her grandfather a Lego White his grandfather a Lego White House, than they did talking about peace deals in the Middle East, and now we have four of them. That's the holy grail of geopolitical politics, and they don't want to talk about it. Nancy Pelosi called it a distraction. Had Obama done it, I don't think it would have been a distraction. He would have been heralded on a world stage. It's just different for us. This is a common sense administration that's getting things done. It's not a swamp creature administration like Joe Biden's would be. Amazingly enough, even today, running for president as president, Donald Trump is still the outsider. <laughs> He's still the guy that's anti-establishment because you're running against the biggest swamp creature in American history. Uh, describe for us, the president has said we're rounding the curve and turning the corner on coronavirus, even though cases are going up, as you noted. Uh, a lot of people are afraid of the virus. Do you think that his kind of sunny outlook could be hurting him with people who are a little bit more afraid? No, I, listen, I think, again, you know, if you're like me, you're 42 with no pre-existing conditions, you know, it's, it's fine. I mean, my girlfriend got corona, and, and honestly, had we not been around my father, we would have never known. Like, there was no symptoms, no nothing. Now, if you're elderly and you have a pre-existing condition, of course, you have to take it a little bit more seriously, but that's the difference, that's the nuance. You know, the Democrat, well, just blanket, shut down the country, we'll shut down schools, we'll shut down this for a disease that's, you know, 99.997 or whatever people, I mean, it's not a rational response. The damage of another shutdown, what that would do to people's livelihoods when they lose their jobs and their homes and their marriages and go to drugs and alcohol, I mean, that would do a thousand times more damage than this disease ever possibly could. But they don't think that way. Uh, there, there's no rational response. So there's a one-size-fits-all blanket approach. If you're more susceptible, sure, take that responsibility. For you in everyday life, wash your hands a little bit more. You know, do some social distancing when you can. But we have to live our lives and we can't destroy our livelihoods. Do you think that election day should end on election night? That's it. Votes that come in yeah. after that, are they legitimate in your eyes? Uh, you know, listen, I, I see what's going on. I mean, some of these places, in North Carolina, 11 days later, they can still do it. You know, and we've seen the games that are being played, right? We've seen, you know, the Democrats, they don't want the signature to have to match up with the registered voter. I mean, come on. It's that voter's signature. It's not supposed to match. You know, I, I am concerned that with 11 days, they say, okay, we lost a state by 10,000 votes. Congratulations. Here's 10,001. Magically, they're all for Democrats. I mean, we've seen this play out too many times, unfortunately. So I do think that some of these rules are, are really ridiculous when we're still counting ballots 11 days out. You know, meaning if they were cast on election day and it takes you that long to count them for some strange reason, you know, I'm fine with that. But if people are turning in votes 11 days after election day, give me a break. It's ridiculous. 2024 is right around the corner. You had 3,000 people show up in Florida. People were chanting 46 when you were here earlier. What do you think about all of this? That people are kind of, you know, opening the door to potentially a Donald Trump, Trump Jr. Pre presidential run in 2024. Well, listen, I, I, listen, it's a great honor, uh, you know, that someone, you know, feels that way is, I mean, I can't think of a higher compliment. Uh, at the same time, I think it's largely because they're just excited to have someone who's willing to engage, someone's willing to fight. I mean, I, you know, I saw that even when they went after me that way. My own lawyers were like, hey, you shouldn't be doing that because they'll use it against you. I was like, I don't care. I'm right. Like, we just got to fight. Two years later, they said, you're right. You know, if you'd have just backed in the corner and rolled over and died like the left would want you to, they wouldn't have gone any lighter. Uh, they wouldn't have fabricated any less of the nonsense that they were selling for years. But you fighting actually sort of forced them to actually put up or shut up. And they obviously had nothing. Uh, you know, the other side doesn't have to do that because they'll protect them at all costs. So it is a great honor. But my only focus right now is 2020. The next five days, I get my father in there. I've seen the results. I've seen what he can do. I've seen what he can grow. I understand how much he loves America, and that's an America I want my kids growing up into. When you see this socialist Marxist platform you know, th that Joe Biden is uh, you know, pushing, you know, again, this is not your grandparents' Democrat Party anymore. This stuff is nuts. Uh, we're not going to recognize America. When you see the censorship that's going on with social media and big tech and even mainstream media canceling their own because they want to help one party win, that should scare all of us because you know, the Second Amendment's always been on the table in these elections with the Democrats. Our First Amendment is on the table this time, and that's very real and very scary. All right, Donald Trump Jr., thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Okay, let's dive a little deeper into the Trump campaign and its efforts here in New Hampshire, bringing in John DeStaso. Thanks for joining us, John. Good morning, Adam. So, John, even though Trump diehards will admit that the campaign, their organizing efforts were a mess in 2016, the president still almost won in here anyway. What's different about the Trump game, ground game in 2020? Well, one thing is its longevity. It's been going on really since... Uh, the midterms at least, right after the midterms, right during the midterms, that there's a full organization. The combination of the uh, Trump campaign and the Republican National Committee, uh, known as Trump Victory, 
a, a full-fledged organization, not seat of the pants this time. Uh, as you said, even the most ardent Trump supporter will admit that last time, you know, they kind of skated by in terms of organization. But as of now, uh, I'm un I understand that they're, they've not, they do knock on doors. They are going house to house. Uh, the Democrats are doing more lit drops, not doing face to face. Uh, 750,000 doors right now, more than a, a million calls. They're saying, you know, 2 to 2.5 million contacts. So it's a, it's a full-fledged organization. On the flip side of that, we heard Donald Trump Jr. say that his dad is still the outsider, but he's a little less of the outsider than he was in 2016. Now he has a record. He's facing an opponent who isn't the same kind of lightning rod that Hillary Clinton was, and we're in the throes of a pandemic. Safe to say there are a lot of headwinds this time for the president. Yeah, I think his biggest challenge is overcoming the, the, the COVID uh, situation. Uh, there are obviously his ardent supporters are going to be with him, but he needs to stretch beyond that. And when he gets into the into the people who might not be, you know, my president, right or wrong, uh, a MAGA person, pe people that he needs to be on board, there is a concern there as to whether he is actually following through. You know, they they see him out at these rallies with people without masks, people huddled together. They're huge rallies. That excites a lot of people. But for those who might be, and there's not very many undecideds, but for those who might be uh, a little bit on the fence, that's, that's concerning in the way they feel that he's uh, dealt with this virus. So I think that's the major headwind, uh, certainly, because it's also taken away his, at least temporarily, it did take away his number one uh, issue, which is the economy.